Welcome everyone. My name is Joelle Diaz, director of the Walter O. Evans Center for African American Studies at Skad Museum of Art. Uh, our permanent collection includes more than 60 works by revered African American artists, including the likes of Jacob Lawrence, Aaron Douglas, Elizabeth Catlett, to name a few. Today we launch Rephrase, a new reading series out of the Evans Center that celebrates Black authors across the genres. In this installment, we are lucky to have poets Taylor Johnson and Sean D. Henry Smith to launch our inaugural reading. In the opening photograph of Sean's collection, Wild Peach, fog blurs the grass. As a gradation of one another, two become one, become fluid and infinite. There is low visibility, though we recognize that before us is expanse, if we dare to enter it to hear the sink, to hear the alignment. Every day is an invitation into intimacy, writes Johnson. And it is precisely this blueprint that sets the foundation for our gathering here today to consider the atmospheres, landscapes, wildernesses that converge and occupy our experiences. What do these echo tones birth and enliven within us? How does language and poetry enable and elsewhere? Taylor's collection, Inheritance, speaks to the notions of spaciousness, surveillance, identity, desire, and transcendence. Their work has appeared in the Paris Review, The Baffler, Scalawag. They are a Kavi Khanum graduate fellow and a recipient of the 2017 Larry Neal Writers Award from the DC Commission of the Arts and Humanities. Sean Dee's collection, While Peach, explores memory and nonlinear time in a roaming landscape of the artist's poetry, foot, photography, recipes, and spells. They work primarily in poetry, photography, and performance, engaging Black experimentalisms and collaborative practices. They, earned their, uh, they have earned awards and fellowships from the Fulbright Program, the Poetry Project, and Poets House. There's so much to get to, so let's begin with the reading. Up first is Taylor Johnson. Since I quit that internet service, I'm thinking more about the transitive properties in books, the words, the palimpsest of images accruing in my brain, but more immediately, the book in my hand, the cover worn at one end from sweat and gripping it when it comes close, close as in when I stood up, let one deep exhale when I came to the lines of all fearless happiness from which reaches my life I sing and find it underlined by a beloved stranger. It's like turning the record over, knowing you're hearing what I'm hearing. Easing up on the edge of the chair, it's like we're holding hands now at the edge of a white silence from which we are to make a music of our being here, of being moved, wherein our music complements and holds close each other's sound, sound in the wet room of the tree I met you in. Nothing is said about the water or the fearless trees angled toward and against the light. Light that did fall on me, made much of me. Light that sings through me, so I'm singing. Nocturne. What was rampant in me was not wisteria, perhaps decay or loss of reflection. No one like me gets old, or so I thought, even as I watched the days fade into each other. Was I no one? Which phrase means a grown up girl, mica gilded, pure myth, gone. Thoreau might say I was trying to find the door to nothingness, that the wild was already in me. However, I walked out my bed to find my skin only to return, moon drunk, bramble laden, stripped to sinew, a broken syntax. No denying how I got here. I laid down among the tall grass and came up a specter. I came up everywhere. Ecclesiastes, how to testify. In the marketplace for my voice was everything, was meaningless. 
knee deep in the mud with my tongue out. Monsoon, mason jar, morning glory. Must I carry even the idiolect of gravel, glossolalia and stupor of all things moving and unmoving. I fall in and fall back out. Oh, exaltation, the Virginia pine grows straight up to deeper blue and most tap roots I'll never see. I was waiting for you to turn around, pretending none of this baffles me, not taking it personally. Go, go, ode. Oh, capacious room, give me your tongues. I'm done with being self-possessed. Take hold, turn the river in me. I'm freed up to be anybody else. My molecules twinned with the sound. Oh, erotic hours, pass me not. Keep me in the pocket. Oh, percussive descent, devotion is anything you say go awry. In this early hour, keep me recursive. The impulse is to lose my feet. I'm yet overcome, you seismic drop, you sovereign fade. Oh, black chaos, I'm in study at your center. Turn me out. Club 2718. Because I don't have the juice or enough gold, anything to enter, a room that occasionally exists inside of me is the poorly lit dance floor of Club 2718. Thirst is a way of knowing, not knowing. I was on a gin-fueled hunt for big asses and music I could cry to. A woman almost twice my age asks where I've been, and she shuts the door. Like any American, what haunts me is my addiction to private property, not time or blackness. I want to love no one in particular the way I say I love my woman when she's in the doorway and mad at me. There were days I believed my grandfather owned my grandmother, kept her overfed and out of the sun in the back room. Occasionally a room exists inside of me where Johnny Hartman and John Coltrane's one and only love plays on repeat. On repeat too is a video of my grandfather dancing a limber leg shuffle and singing across the wall to my grandmother. To love like him is to be a student of regret. To abide by regret is to watch grief turn to ecstasy. I wept in the winter when I left my woman. I wept in the heat when she came back. Art movie. Red is a secret in the trees. The train passes through the trees in Alabama. Red earth, red earth. The winter light consumes the field. The light silvers, the light relieves, the light thrown as dust upon the field I put my ear in. I crack an egg and a saxophone that tells on me, yells at me, comes out, no yoke. The train hollers to stop. The train stops, still loads new passengers, but the conductor won't let me get off and kiss you. You know, that's what I haunted to do. The stage is the window circle between us, the emergency exit door. I keep you in my ear and give you how I'm doing and what I want to eat where I'm not on a train. You and your white boots. You tell me what else could come out of an egg. Women all the way down, holding waist. The train is a place going by, strictly passing through. I touch a stranger's wrist going back to my seat. The whole train becomes a garment I put on. I touch indiscriminately. I can't stay, I tell the dog, waving from your convertible. None of the windows open. I held your gaze until I couldn't. In the previous scene, I took you to the slip until we were shining tunnels for sound. I took your sound for my name, never asked what I called myself. It's real honor to read for you, with you, and with Sean, who I love. 
I'll just read a few more. I forget about money, watching the clouds over Eighth and Ingraham, the clouds a rhubarb colored ship in the sky. To my right, it all grays out, the bats emerging now from the chimneys, the bats listening for the cicada's echo. Echo is a way to create space, is a metaphor for time, time for the cop to move along, I think, watching the cop watch me from my porch. Fuck 12. The robin on the wire vine, the wire eye competing with the bats for cicadas, the robin competing reds with the sky, the sky a money for the cicadas, a way to make space time. The cicadas sounding out the future through repetition. A friend says to spend nothing is to keep flexibility in your hands, to keep your youth. Money, the sound of decay. Money, the repetition of waste. Black existential exegesis. This engine and cog business is wigged out. I want nothing we're owed from the ship gig, thence the land whereon modern sound weaned off our cowrie and cached aged conjure. Land whereon our woe is chic and wanted. Shout out to every nigga cajoled into winging it in a crowd, crowing about being the hewer and the hewer subject. Oh, my aching chore, choir do upon our ochre echo throughout this land, this cadence gag. Our ego, ego, greeted upon and caged. Grace is our odd crowd, which encores green and geodes. Shout out to every nigga dodging age by ignoring human genre fiction gore. Ergo, we're nowhere, reneging on being owned and renewed, weighing nothing like race. Shout out to every nigga eroding off the edge of something else, gossamering in the air. Bolaño blued. The forest is bordered by the highway to the west and the railroad tracks to the east. Here, like a dead man, I never sleep. I'm the moon, soon the sea darkening in apology. My sickness is antithetical, my accomplice or attempt, pride, rage, violence. For a long time, I wondered what English meant, if it was worth its weight in enlightenment, everything slow and asthmatic. Everything disgustingly still, frozen somewhere in the air. Maybe that's why I can't express want I what, two words strung together. Maybe that's why I lived alone and did nothing for three years. Loneliness is an aspect of human authorization, verbal egotism. I write to understand stillness, not to praise. To name is to please, to keep awake. All pleas to the highway, swells, bursts. I'm going to show a film now. I'm going to show a film now. Yesterday, to keep awake, I dreamed I lived inside the agitation of silence, a hollow building in Barcelona, the abandoned Mediterranean, blue, a tree turning the lights on and off. Occasionally it shook, the monkey applauding in the corner, fade to black. Everything gleams like the wind in the rocks, the sad stories I must tell you, the gesture that never came, the trigger pulled at the worst possible moment. Audience. A kind of wildness descends and across the expanse, the attendant wind drones its one feckin' song. When I'm so tender in the thick of rot, I let all the morning wet spread a plague across this threadbare Vessel that holds in what hums, what rushes beneath. Give as the ground gives. Make of me your groveling tongue, your dust, your possessed, possessing, never let up. Thank you. Thank you, Taylor. I'm, I'm still um, meditating on the line from the Bolaño Blue the poem, and uh, I dreamed I lived inside the agitation of silence. Um, so many things to kind of pull from that line alone. Um, I appreciate you reading. Um, next, we'll hear from Sean. Take it away. Thank you for having me. Taylor, it's great to be with you again. I love you so much. Um, wow, all right. Uh, 
let's get into it. Malfagape, The gospel of midnight is bike chain, smoke song, stomp, stomp, hallelujah. It's hard to be anything but maritime these days. Pray tell, lest it slips away, lest it slipped out of you at routine stop, October summons. It's hard to be anything but jawbone these days, I tell you. Not because I'm tight calcium, but damn tooth, loose shake, pop, shook, cavity, tin, tight, pipe, wind, water, gram. I'm weeping under several blankets. I'm weeping under several beehives. This room is tornado museum, tightly whipping sideways, wasps softly drilling weary walls. A tight corner turned hard will get the job done. The mathematics of consequence leaves little room for serendipity. We are tired of being vegetables of misery. Cash crop my spirit list, your God is expensive. It is infinite lifetimes, force bled, dry, inarticulate mantra, prayer for monetary confinement. They think they juice me liquidless, but there isn't a straw in the world thick enough to drain me. Spit blood, park bench, don't lie in unfamiliar space. I'm building my own casket so I'll know it was a place I labored and loved. Horse water, drink slow till November, 70 brick gold, fire sky, rid you flat light. Autumn ombre stampede, thicker than corn husk. Wide open, ancient ago, earned mana showers. Cracked rock speaks only in blood if you listen. Good. Deep scratch. Delight the light. Delict. Just outside the city. Salt scrape. Another city atrophied. Whole lot of white people talking about state, state birds. Afro apple aristocracy won't catch me out here in cider season. Bring it to me if you know it's good. Endless tundra crunch. Slide on me nappy and docile. Winter is bad for my posture. Seeds on ground. TV in all the wrong places, side by side. I can't be any more frantic in general. Copacetic in nature. Out of order. Some with justice. There's more sympathy when she sings it. Muscle lunge, signed in flesh, memory. These things reoccur. Hot process. Trying not to be pre precious about it. Soon come. It got it odd. Slippery pink sky stack. Hog proximity don't mean shit. I see it all when I reach for the summer water. Falling, heavy, heaving, hymnals, harrowing. Brother, I hear you whistling. I am prone to flies in my morning, flies in my tea. In my teeth, they fly through new obstacles, ostensibly rare bit. Barefoot along the rim, the smoky body tumbles into flash heart, into flash heat. Brother, we are joyous despite blisters, and I see you just over the summer water, and I miss you. Sugar cut, sweet, sweet sanctuary, sincerely yours. 24 in the lion's mouth, two in the virgin oil. Some sun circles, etc., etc., enclave, in cave. Right for the Jupiter, right for the juniper, ripe for it all. Extend the rarity, the raw sleep of flowers. The garden at the underground. Drenched in purple impossibilities, little edges all laid. Horseback bandits, naked and illuminate. Share a spirit with Miss Lawson after orange serenades. Are you surreal? Dancing with the woods on your birthday, that fucked up Gobert, motherfuckers just as complicit. The widow, forlorn. The hood hang, citizens of the world. We are all undeserving of Nina Simone, but white people especially so. Are you here for fashion or for poetry or the pity part all the same? Mills and silhouettes. That sage you're smelling, I swear. The cat's missing larynx from that fight long ago. Are you surreal? Fuck around and get got, get goo, so gone. More piercings with your friends and portraits of your friends for your friends. Work with who you know. Rewrite it for your own sanity and victory. Pleasure creeping up now. You can't really plan for it, but just make sure there's a seat ready. And all things are possible. Leap over the ocean and gesture with ecstasy. Ultimately, I want to change. 
we'll come back to this. Um, I kind of wanted to read something on the newer side. Um, just to test it out. <laughs> I feel like I can't hear it until, unless I'm hearing it, you know? Somebody had to hear it. Somebody had to let that boy know. Foot bottom knocking on the pavement. The illicit dirt path etches collectivity. Our yearning for real ground underfoot rejects the architects of this park who go to sleep at night thinking they're architects of parks, who go to sleep at night thinking they're architects. Well, I'm a critic. The state fenced in and manufactured the wild, and the people brought the wildness in our step. Take me to what you want to show me, sibling of the sea, talk it to the roots. Take me to that tender, rugged edge. Mm. Remedies, one. What can I know of this life but what it costs me? Pretending to love these patterns of negotiation, pretending the double world was acceptable, the skin beneath the skin made hell of our hell. The source from which the source draws rectifies its embellishment, reifies its abandon. Another way. In a room filled with overturned bottles, the ceiling fan turns, knowing not the relief it provides, but dams with its clicking. We lie awake at night wondering, would it be better to sweat out our sheets, turn the thing off? We remember stillness as we enact it hoping to quiet our body as to cool it. And briefly, I recall how slowly Granny eat. I see her in her dining room chair. Hmm. My microscopics of the banal. All things, everything in the way that they are. Multi-pulsed fennel, funnel, whisper tendrils lie atop, a tilt, tumult, oceanic, succulent grows in wild abandon, wild abundance, boil the bone clean, a shell to live in, what the granular becomes, slime memory of transit, of pulpit, of the power of a full night's sleep, under threatening and whistling sky, under the thumb of thunder, under the sweet kiss of descent, the first fist, the blood moan, the monoculars, the monstrosity, the low cloud, the air salt, asphalt, clenched esophagus, and ardent esoterics. Mm -hmm. My shortcoming is in the anaphora. Put my whole foot in it, but on God, a Nancy dancing, this is as loose as the tangerine tarantula trembles. Been shaken for a fortnight forthcoming and unending. I'm not yelling. Rank and file, your institution does us no good. A redo every time we get together. Fishy ghost haunts all water me bada. Flanger fledglings for forcible forest rupture. When a fire starts to burn, don't mock a nigga with spirit talk. Duppy and doppelganger doubling. Keep the children in the other room. Black agoraphobia or to love the way home swells inside, insides. I'm them when the lights is off there. Look me in the eye and choke on my name. This is dire to have lived this before every last minute. And it's just my luck that I'm doing it again. Skip track, a thousand leaves to realize I'm on hiatus. Deer shaking in the woods, headlights honed in. Thick britches in the bumble pattern, unlock the swarm. Nomad nomenclature for the culture crumbles. Nicked nomenclature for the bulbous vernacular. Nude nomenclature for the tinny taxonomy. New nomenclature for arachnid night sweat. Fall. Decadent calamity in the architecture. Decadent calamity in the slow hour with you in some quiet time, with you in the slow hour, the comforting smell of sleep, decadent calamity in the flower moon, wide awake in rotation, cubed palms read blank in the quake, tropical brutality, tropical brutalism, brutalist beach house, buzzing, sunbeat, deep in my chest. I read a couple more. Hm. 
fish head stew. Hold high for all to see, tautology for now, caught in the joy lock, in the dreadlock, the choke hold, here I hermit, cross hairs and fingers, to bones we boil for fortune and forgiveness, the sludge of eye whites he slurps to taunt the children, you don't need a father to teach you, the hierarchy of fish and flesh, salt can cure and kill. Mm. Uh, soft life and context. I comprehend how the sky shrinks and the day by virtue. Gold soak, seek, suit, sought, crumbling, charcoal in my burner, brass and brazen frankincense for miles, thickens the air for days at a time without pause, lounge and lung. A soft bowl of whip, delicate dollop, grains graze and honey drip drizzle. Let the record play, safe in the hands of love. Let the record show, a thousand pounds of wool over, under, a soft memory like deer skin, like teardrops, a wine that tastes of lilies. There you sit, feet up, as if you need no one, as if you'll never die. I'm actually gonna, I'm gonna read something from um, this chapbook, actually, of Flotsam Sweet, um, A Strange and Precarious Life, or How We Chronicled a Little Disaster, and I won't leave the dance floor till it's out of my system. Um, and I think this will be my last one. Thank you all for having me. Dragonfly. Perches on their finger, she sings, you're exactly where you're meant to be. She watched us from the window as we prepped a feast and tribute. She joined us at the picnic, cozied up right on the blanket, played a game of truth or dare. Yes, dragonfly lives alongside all summer. She says, open your heart and live on the sun. I abide, I want to live with ease. She says the ensemble is everywhere, rustling core, earth's dismantle, tremble at the glory of song, an exercise of diaphragm. The quiet wind rushes, rushes, rushes. Brother, we stand in digital garble, thin, thin, blue, new, blue, a body quake under collapsing music. Thank you. Thank you, John, that was lovely. And I'm meditating on the, the line that you said, open your heart. And I can't recall the, the last bits of that. And live on the sun. <laughs> and, what sun? and live on the sun. Live on the sun, like um, what a gift, right? Um, to the warmth and to the possibility of just being. So anyway, I'm taking part of um, the conversation today was to kind of reference kind of eco-poetics and, you know, um, wilderness in some way. And so I'm curious as a kind of a, an opening question, like what is your relationship to nature? And that question goes to you both. And then perhaps to take it a step further, how does your um, relationship to nature inform your poems or make their way into your poems? Sean, I'll give you a minute to, to breathe. Um, thank you. <laughs> I think it's, uh, I think the thing is like, it's, it's, we are the same thing, you know what I mean? Us and nature, who we are, it's not devoid from that or separate. Um, so writing, uh, about nature, writing with nature is, is, it's really writing with, you know what I mean? Because those same elements and the same properties are within our bodies, um, and like recognizing that what happens in nature happens to us also. Um, and especially like as black people and, and global black people, like we have a special relationship with nature, you know what I mean? And it's not it's not all about work and and 
producing, you know. Mm -hmm. It's about knowledge and, uh, yeah, it's about living, you know. Mm -hmm. so, like, I see Sean, you know what I mean? Like, we, uh, I think we met through that, through that, you know, that mm -hmm. connection to nature. Mm -hmm. I can see my outside when I look at you, you know. Mm -hmm. My wilderness is, is within you, and I see it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 I'm always... I mean, like, I, I, I... My memories of you are all under trees, no matter where where else we've been. Like, there's, there's still always a like a tree involved, you know, there's a, there's a, always the ground involved. Um, there's always walking involved. Um, yeah, I mean, exactly what you said, we're like, we're not separate from it. And so it's just, I think if anything, um, a lot of the way our worlds are oriented um, can mean that we can be desensitized to that relationship and, and to the presence of nature. And and if anything, I'm just trying to like heighten my awareness and trying to like heighten my, you know what I mean? Like that entanglement or, or my my memory of the entanglement. Um, the other day um, I got lost walking in the woods and I, I didn't have my phone with me um, and it was getting dark. It was already dark and I figured it out just just by the the trees like i was just like i know this tree from from this walk and and and, fr and from other you know like I, I was on a path i don't usually take but i i was able to get back through remembering you know um just like outlines not even um the other things <laughs> you know but it, it, it's like it's just that it's just trying to like get back to that relationship where, where we recognize each other. <laughs> you know, if anything, the tree was telling me back, pointing my way back home. Yeah. I, love, I love the phrasing of that, the kind of, you know, making my way back home. And, and to what kind of Taylor was mentioning, it's a kind of quest for alignment, a realignment, right? Mm -hmm. In the way in which we sometimes are forced to disconnect from nature. Um, and Sean, I think you mentioned in, in one of your um, poems, right? You say something along the lines of like, you, you have a, like a sharp sensitivity um, to, to order and disarray. Mm -hmm. And it made me think about um, the kind of, you know, your accumulation of language um, and perhaps like how that might, like how that structures your poems, if it does at all. Does that inform the way you structure your poems? <laughs> I feel like I'm still learning how I structure the poems. I don't know if, I, I think those poems are structuring me. And that's not, I don't even mean that to like deflect. Um, but like, I, 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 um, I mean, often, I, I, I think the closest thing I have to form is sound. And so it's like the, the line and the breath that is required to like complete it is kind of what determines how it ends up on the page. Mm -hmm. um, if, if, if that's sort of, um, a part of the question, I suppose. Um, and, and, but in, in terms of sort of the, the, like, yeah, the, the, the structure is, is, it's just trying to get, it's just trying to get really, and I think this is also related to the, the, my, my photography practice, I suppose, but it's, it's, it's just trying to get close. It's just trying to like, look really closely like at, at, at something that can easily, again, in this sort of like, um, yeah, I don't know. We, 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 there are tons of things that'd be distracted by. Like, I'm, and I'm just trying to get closer to the things that I'd actually would prefer to be paying attention to, mm -hmm. and and to like remember those technologies and those informations, and like put them back into practice, or or, or yeah, something like that. Yeah, yeah, that makes complete sense. And then Taylor, do you have anything to add to that in terms of the ways that you kind of gather? Um, whether that be image um, or words or experiences and how, you know, that might, um, how you organ organize or orchestrate that into, you know, um, creating works? 
Yeah, I think. Um, I mean, most most of poems are like they're kinetic. You know what I mean? So they're they're written and walking and thinking and listening, which are all like you know, very involved things for me. So s- similar to what Sean said, I feel like the 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 form is sound. You know what I mean? And how I'm listening to something dictates how it comes out. Um, and I always feel like it's not, you know, I try to get it at, as exact as I can, you know, but um, it's never going to be the direct way I hear it, but I am trying to create a similar sense through, through writing it out. Um, but yeah, I think most things come through through listening, um, and a lot of that listening is, you know, with walking. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's fantastic. I'm mean, thinking about um, kind of... Uh, how to how to say a thing, right? Um, and it made me think about like the inexplicit, right? Or like what can't be said, maybe perhaps even the ineffable. And um, you know, what is one like how do y'all reach towards kind of clarity, right? So like that's kind of the, the, the quest of language or the quest of poetry and writing is, is how best to say a thing, but perhaps knowing that like we won't quite reach that. Um, and so I'm just curious about how you um, work through that perhaps tension, a desire to want to say a thing, but also being limited by the language that we possess. And how do you move through that? Does that make sense as a question? Yeah, it does. Mm-hmm. And perhaps there is no answer. I'm just thinking about like no, no. your works in, in, in this. Yeah, I don't know. I I I'm always trying to come to clarity. You know what I mean. Um, but I'm also okay because I'm like I'm still I'm still a young person or just like a young a young person having experiences in the world that I know that most things I come to it's just like there isn't all the clarity there. You know what I mean. Like I can only listen so good and and. Uh, ultimately give give up my ego in the service of listening, which is like to to become selfless in a way uh, and to be be absolved by what it is that I'm you know what what is around me um, not in like a distracted way but in a very pointed way um, so yeah, I think clarity like uh, clarity comes with time you know um, and I think that uh yeah, it's just like time and intention. So I, I don't know. I think the poems in, in Inheritance, for example, I, I I reached a certain kind of clarity in writing them and putting them all together. You know what I mean? Yeah. But now I'm in a place where it's like, oh, yeah, I have another kind of clarity and I'm writing other kinds of things. You know what I mean? So this mm-hmm. is just one snapshot of that walk in, in, into like that kind of clarity or just kind of, you know. That that been absorbed, yeah. Mm. Yeah, I definitely think there's a kind of speak, speaking of what you said, Taylor. I I think there's definitely a a sense that like the work is still teaching me something. You know, there's there's something that happened at the point in which it arrived at a certain kind of completion. It's like okay, it's it's in print now, or it's in a manuscript now, um, and and the lesson that was being learned when like, when it was in the stage of being written and in the stage of being completed in that form, but then in the stage of being in relationship to the rest of everything else. Um, it's, 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 yeah, it, it, it's either becoming more clear or actually maybe even, you know, undoing itself in a way. Um, Because maybe the thing I thought I learned wasn't the thing that was being taught, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I, I think it's 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 truly a process of like being with the work. I mean, I, I, I'm there. Are the, even in this arrangement that was tonight's reading or this afternoon, <laughs> um, uh, you know, the, the, there's just like an order of appearance that I'm like, well, there's something different when when these two sounds are together and where these two poems are together. Um, which are written across different places and times and amidst different peoples and with different, you know, shoes on or something, you know, like it's, yeah. Yeah, no, certainly, and I, um, 
when I'm thinking about um, perhaps, you know, some of those SCAD students in the creative writing program that we have here at the university mm -hmm. um, who might um, perhaps have questions around listening and how listening is another way to perhaps move through a kind of scene. You know what I mean? And, and I'm wondering if you have any um, tips or um, suggestions about how best to listen or um, and how to translate that listening into something that into, into the visual, right? Because I think that's that's the challenge, right? Um, I think Linda Briggs has that essay, like the art of finding, right? But I'm curious about how you all, you know, um, come to your own personal findings. And, and again, and, and what the, what might we impart on, you know, younger writers, right? We know we're also young, but like, what can we teach them about getting closer to listening and seeing? I mean, I, I, I think silence is so, so important, you know, just like having, having time of being silent and being silent with yourself. I think, it, you know, Sean had mentioned earlier, it's just very, it's very easy to be distracted right now um, by a lot of, a lot of things. It's easy to like give your mind away to a lot of things. Um, yeah. yeah. So I think silence is, silence is probably, it. and then also like, I don't know, reading. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. The age old thing. The more you read, the better. <laughs> yeah. 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 And then I, th I think there's also like a. Yeah. I don't know. For me, like, a, there's, there's an importance to like repetition. Like, re revisiting a lot is important to me. And, and, and revisiting in different ways, like, be it sitting still or like in motion or you know just standing up honestly like i yeah and then just having like your listening experiences be integrated into like many modes of physicality um yeah yeah i'm curious about that because you know in both your works i think i believe you mentioned echo right mm -hmm. and i think sometimes the way i interpret echo is a kind of anxiety <laughs> of sorts right thing that kind of lingers in our minds and kind of stays there for a moment so i'm curious like you know, what occupies your echoes? And, and I guess I asked that question in a way that like, we think about wilderness is not just a pastoral, right? That we think about the wilderness can also be, you know, the inner city, our relationship to our, like, our environment, the people that we live with, you know, our loved ones. And so I'm wondering like, you know, if you were to kind of, you know, I know you um, are working on new things since these kind of collections came out, but like, you know, what occupies your echoes? And if that feels too inaccessible, like what do you think occupied the echoes in these works? Right? Like what are the what are the voices in these works, um, in your estimation? Hmm. Some sometimes the echo. I I do think there's a there's like the sort of like sometimes there's glimpses of like a a, a much smaller me <laughs> um and sometimes i think the echo is that um but i don't I actually don't like that's not you know i mean the, yeah it's it, it, there's a there's a few things it, it's like it, it it's 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 like people and forces i'm still coming to know like i i, I do think there's like an element of like you know like who i'm haunted by and who I'm protected by, like making themselves known um, through the work and like, and without giving me their names, but just like, hey, I'm here. And I'm, and I'm yeah, I'm still, still learning their names, you know? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, yeah, I think that's what I, that's, that's, that's where I'm at with it right now, I think. But I'm, I, I am, I, I do, I actively know that I'm still learning what the like what what's being bounced back, you know, like it's it's yeah yeah yeah. Um, I believe that for sure. I think some of it is like I I still don't understand. I still don't know all the people who are my influence. You know what I mean? Like like you said, those who are protecting and haunting us. I think there are a lot of voices in there that like because I was in a place to listen, just kind of came through 
and it is it is my work now on the other side of you know having having all the poems together it's like yo trying to identify what's mm-hmm. happening here for me and like how my interior voice is changing throughout yeah mm-hmm. 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 thank you for that uh, i just want to invite um the folks who might be in the room with us to post questions in the chat um i know that one of the things that i see here is that folks want to know where you're currently based like where are you right now in the world <laughs> I'm in New Orleans, Louisiana. Um, I'm in Amsterdam. Oh, sorry. <laughs> You're good. Go okay. Yeah, yeah. I'm I'm in the Netherlands. I'm in Amsterdam. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> you know, I I have questions about like what those places are doing for you now in your work. Um, but I will hold back <laughs> a little bit um, on those questions. Um, but uh, I, you know. Taylor, in, in, in your poem, kind of June DC, you wrote that, you know, everything unfolds magnificent around me. And I remember just coming across that line and being like, ah, oh, like, so in that spirit, what leaves you in awe, wonder, and amazement, right? Because I think that that's what nature also has the capacity to do. But like, what are some things that right now are leaving you kind of uh, in a sense of awe, wonder, and amazement? Oh, man. Um... I mean, I'm grateful for my health, you know what I mean? Like that's that's a that's an awesome thing right now to be to be healthy in my body and in my mind. That's that's a lot of that's a lot of awe and magnificence for me. Um because you know, I think there there are just a lot of things that can that can try to take that that level of wonder away. Um mm-hmm. yeah. Just waking up, that's that's what's that's what's magnificent, you know. And then also like I mean, I've been with Sean's book for a while now and that's that's been filling me with with some serious awe, you know, for, for a while. Mm-hmm. What about it giving you a sense of awe? There's so much that it gives me a sense of awe, but I'm curious in your from you. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I don't know. It's 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 wild when you can when you're able to communicate with somebody who speaks your language. You know what I mean? Speaks with you. <laughs> And I mean, I was saying the other day, like me, me and Sean, we met, we met in a hallway in a hotel, but we really met the next day when we had to, we decided to facilitate a room of people giving each other five minutes of uninterrupted eye contact, but we also did that with each other. Mm-hmm. And for me, it's like, man, that's, um, that's a wild thing, you know what I mean? And then to, to recognize, to recognize who we were and, you know, yeah. it, that's of- and going with that, Taylor, the kind of someone that speaks your your language, I think so many students, I think, come across like that challenge of like getting toward a language that feels like theirs, but also like and to resist kind of that the notion of permission, right? Because the idea is like you have to speak a certain way or write a certain way, and and you know I'm just really curious about you know your thoughts on that, but maybe more specifically like. Sean, I know that you, you know, work both, and you know, in poetry and photography, and so I'm kind of, and you mentioned that those are kind of inseparable for you, but I'm wondering if there is, um, you know, an aspect of each that informs the other, and and also because I'm thinking of too, like, so many students are often thinking about limitations when it comes mm-hmm. to the creative process, and I'm wondering like how you resist that by, you know, you know, um, creating across mediums yeah um i think um any i'm 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 not i don't have the like word for word quote but um uh uh, audrey lord says something along the lines of like sort of everything being filtered through being a poet and i i'm actually i think of i'm learning more and more that that's that's what the photography practice is and actually what the other practices I'm sort of dabbling in are. And I wouldn't even, actually, I think dabbling is like not the right word. Cause I, I'm, I, you know, I, I do approach everything with a kind of dedication. Um, but um, I, I do think there's something that's like in, in recognizing, like I, I think a lot about the the poet as sort of like an ancient role, and like a you know like I think a lot of like what, like, the village Taylor and I first knew each other in was like you know and and I think 
like there's something connected to that ancient role that is like that de that also demands me to like pick up a camera or like you know be if i'm working in sound or if i'm working with food or you know any of the other sort of things that i'm doing like it, it's it's still it's still filtered through that like ancient role um and and it also means that I I just never get bored, you know. Like I I just I always have something to be working on. Like it's and and then it's just manifesting how you know it's it's picking the right song for the right the right instrument for the right song. Um. Um. But going specifically to sorry, sorry but to, 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 to photo and poetry, I, I'm I'm. The, it's it's kind of secular and 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 and, you know, like the, the, there are times where it's. Um, I'm writing the poem. I'm writing the, the like the words are moving into the photograph, or the photograph is move. You know, I'm, I'm writing through the photograph, or I'm writing the instructions in which to photograph. Um, and and instructions actually feels like too. Like like my hand is too heavy in that, you know. But it's it's there. The, maybe I'll even put it simply: is I, I moved here. I wrote two months before I moved here. Um, I kept having dreams about spiders and I wrote a poem about some spiders and I moved here and they were all here. Like all, all the spiders I was talking about were, there's one outside my window that built a web every morning and, and took it down by night. And there were two that would traverse around this room. And and I think, it, you know, I mean, I think it's that. It's it's like the, the they, they're coming to and through me, you know, one way or another. Yeah, I think in, in one of the, Last poem you read, you called it Spirit Talk, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's a nice way to put it. Um, I'm going to just ask this last question as a way to kind of close out the event. And uh, I think you'll, you know, um, recognize the name. But uh, Philip, you know, Williams asks, you know, or has a question about desire, you know, and wondering if um, in your own poems or even a line you've written uh, revealed to you something about how your desire, um, about how you desire, rather and what you desire. What has your own work taught you about how you embrace your lives? Hmm? <laughs> Should we break it down after? I, I mean, I kind of actually want to, like, there's so many kinds of love in inheritance and that's kind of what, um, I'm trying to learn, you know, like I, I'm actually like, I, like, I, I think, um, I think there's, there's some, you know, I, I, I think that, yes, like I, I could probably find a line in my own work that does something, but actually I, I think I'm most drawn to <laughs> right now, especially, but just always in general is, is just like the, like love is so expansive and there's so many kinds of love. And this and 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 you know I don't know. There's just a lot to be learned, and and a lot that I'm needing to learn, and a lot that I'm wanting to learn. You know, and um, yeah, I don't know. I I think and 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 not that love and desire are the same thing, but in that I'm desiring to know what love is. You know, um, and and I know what it is. You know, and and I, and I'm and I know some kinds, and I would like to keep knowing more. So, well. and yeah, I, I, I'm tying myself up, but I'm I'm. I'm yeah, I, I think that's kind of like, I, I think that's what Taylor teaches me so much, you know, like, I'm, yeah. It's definitely mutual. I think that like, I'm, I'm endeavoring to find, you know, every day, like a, a an idea about desire and love that is not mediated by um, something that, you know, is sold to me, essentially. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of what uh, what I was working through in inheritance is like really looking at the things that have not been sold to me, um, and like what is true. And and I think that 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 ultimately dictates how I live. Um, I guess like in an economic or political sense, you know what I mean. It, it is about uh, staying close to the root, I guess, which is which is also what I find in in, in your work, Sean, is is the love at the root, you know. So yeah, but it, I mean. It, it is all, it is all teaching, like, you know what I mean? Yeah. Certainly, certainly. Well, I appreciate you both um, for being with us um, and I'm grateful to have shared space with, 
space with you today. Um, again, thank you again, Sean and Taylor, and to all of you who are out there listening and joining in. Um, later today, there is a guest and guest, and guest programming with a SCAD um, grad, Marissa, and um, I hope you all have a great day. And so soon. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>